Hi there, Wycliffe Barrett's x -Plane Dedicated. Today we're going to look at Auto Ortho. I'm going to do an install tutorial for you. Uh, you've heard me talk about this on my uh, PC review video and you've probably seen some images up on Facebook. Auto Ortho is the new auto, is a new auto photo scenery uh, package um, unlike Auto for XP. This is absolutely amazing. Now, um, it's a little bit I was going to say it's a little bit complex to install, but don't worry about that. I'm going to talk you all the way through it and uh, get you up and running. Just some images here you can see of the ortho photo scenery. Now, first of all, you need to download a couple of things, and I'm going to put all the links down in the description below. The first thing you need is Docam, right? Now, you download it, you run it, and then you forget about it, okay? But you do need this. It's called Docan. I will put the links for it in the description below. You simply download it, run it. I've already run it, so here it's asking me if I want to change the installation. I don't. Uh, it's already on my machine. That comes up. It will say install. You click on install, and it just goes in. You don't have to worry about it. You'll see a dialog box come up as it installs, and then it's off within seconds. The second thing you need, of course, is uh, Auto Ortho. And there are a couple of uh, applications. There's one for Linux, there's one for Windows, and there's another one. But you need the one for Windows, okay? And on the page that I'm going to link you to, it will actually tell you what to do, how, how to install it. But I'm going to take you through that anyway. So you download uh, the zip there and you can download that to your downloads folder but you need to extract it then to another location and I would suggest you put it on a hard drive somewhere um, anywhere you want. Once, you, once you've done that you have a folder called auto ortho win and you need to open that. Now you can see here that I've got the, the win zip and uh, I've opened it, I've installed it onto a drive and here it is, but you need to scroll down, scroll down within it and find a file called Auto Auto Win Application. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I've done. I created a shortcut and I put a shortcut on my desktop. Here it is now. I'm just going to drag it over from the other screen. And there it is. So th there's, the, there's the full file, okay? Uh, that I installed and then you scroll down sorry you scroll down and you find the auto auto win application which is there now I created a shortcut for this okay so I created a shortcut and I put the shortcut on my desktop I'm just going to move that over out of the way and there is the shortcut on my desktop now this is where things get a little bit complex you run it for the first time and it will open up this window and this window here now the the two are connected but the the black one you don't need to worry about once it's opened uh you you then choose the region that you're going to install now i've only i've only installed europe okay but you can see the other regions here and you can see the sizes of them now if i recall europe was only something like 12 gigabytes in comparison to if I was to get True Earth Great Britain South, True Earth Great Britain South is 45 gigabytes. I've downloaded the whole of Europe, which is only 12 gigabytes. And what you're downloading to your computer are base files, right? They're not the full files, because the way that AutoAuthor works is it actually streams in the data, okay, as you need it. So I'm just showing you the sizes of the files here. Um, that's Africa and that's 11 gigabytes. Uh, beneath it you've got Asia which is something like 5 gigabytes. Uh, Australasia is uh, close to 9 or 10 gigabytes. So the whole package, if you just have the whole world, it's not that big. Here, here is the comparison as I say. And uh, Great Britain South is 45 gigabytes on its own. So a massive saving in space. So okay we've downloaded it and now you need to run it so uh, you click on the icon this box will appear okay and then this box and you have to click on run and you have to do this before you start explain okay so down at the bottom it says run and the there are, there are a couple of uh, servers that you can use 
there's Bing, etc. But I, I use Firefly, and I found that Firefly works perfectly, okay? So you click on Firefly in the download box, you click Run, and then you start X-Plane. Once, you, once you've hit Run, that dialog box comes up, and that's, that's loading stuff in. You can minimize that, forget about it. It just works in the background, okay? So we start up X-Plane, and... Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into X-Plane and, and I think we're going to go to Innsbruck first. And what I've done is I, I'm going to load the aircraft in. I'm just using the Cessna because we, we're looking at the scenery, not aircraft. And I'm going to start off at... So I think I've managed to get this at 500 feet above Innsbruck. And what we're looking at here now is amazing. Now, I know that Orbex have stated that for you to see the scenery at its best, you've got to be at least 2,000 feet. We're at 500 feet, and look at that. Pin sharp. Now, this is ZL18. Absolutely amazing. Um, I, I was staggered when I first saw this. And I, and even now, you know, I mean, after a few days of using it, it's just unbelievable. Now, I will admit that when you hit run, and then you load in X-Plane, the scenery takes a while to come in because it's streaming in from the servers, right? It's coming over your internet, it's streaming in uh, for the area that you're using. How big the area is, I'm not quite sure, but it loads in as you fly along. Um, and I have, I've seen no stutters. I'm, I'm moving up to a thousand feet now, maybe, yeah, a thousand feet above ground level so we can see the resolution. Does it look the same as when we was at 500 feet, or is it sharper? I'm not quite sure. Let's let's get a bit higher. I think I went up to something like 5,000 feet above ground level. Uh, no, that's a little bit higher. That's around about 7,000 feet above ground level. And does it look sharper, or is it the same as 500 feet? I I, I really don't know, but it does look incredible. And and the reason I chose. Innsbruck, of course, is because it's mountainous as well, and all of this is photo scenery, okay? There's nothing of that belongs to X-Plane. That is just photo scenery draped over the uh, the mesh. Let's move to another location. So we're over Bristol in the UK, and I'm going to do the same thing. Start, off, start us off at around about 500 feet, and, and let's have a look. This is 500 feet above ground level, not forgetting that uh, Bristol Airport is something like... 200 and odd feet above sea level so we're 500 feet above ground level and that, you know that that looks pretty sharp to me um now i know that with orbex and ortho photo for xp the recommendation is that you're at least 2000 feet to get the full benefits so let's move up let's go a bit higher now I think we're going to go up to about a thousand feet above uh, above ground level, and once again, absolutely marvelous. Also, I've got Sim Heaven Europe uh, um, objects in this, so Sim Heaven um, buildings, etc., uh, which really fills out the sim. And also, I've got Sim Heaven vegetation in this as well. Uh, both Sim Heaven, Sim Heaven vegetation are free. Auto for auto ortho is also free. So you not I haven't paid for any of this, which is absolutely incredible. Um, and I cannot remember the name of the developer, but as I say, I will put links in the description below for both Dokan, which you need, and for Auto Auto. Auto, auth, I can't say it. I'm just gonna say Auto Photo Scenery. Or I tell you what, Automatic Auto Photo Scenery. That's easy to say. Automatic ortho. Easy. Instead of auto ortho. <laughs> anyway, um we're gonna we're a little bit higher now, so let's let's really get up there. I think I went up to something like seven thousand feet in the end here. So just just in the height a little bit more. And uh, let's have a look at that. And come on, come on, you need just push the button. Wycliffe, push push the button. Here we go. So a little bit higher. And once again, no difference. Oh no, sorry, I went back down to 500 feet. That's what I did. I went back down to 500 feet above ground level. And, you know, very sharp as well. Somebody mentioned that somebody looked at my video 
of uh, my uh, PC review, and they mentioned about the roads. And so the roads, the X-plane roads, are completely gone. And the roads that you see are in the photo scenery, and traffic actually runs on the roads. It's it's really really clever. Um, I don't know how long the person was working on it. This apparently is um, zero four zero, and apparently zero five will be better. There are some small anomalies. You'll see sometimes small glitches where the scenery has not come in, but it's not over huge areas. It might just be a field or two fields where the scenery hasn't come in. Um, I did try to find a spot. There's one right underneath me, under, under my wing to the right. But at a, at a certain angle, the scenery comes in. You'll see now I, I messed around and I know that field there, right? So that patch is missing. It's not a game, it's not a deal breaker, but apparently in the next update, that will be fixed. You see, oh, there you go, you see? See how the, how it comes in there? Um, so I'm not quite sure what's causing that. Um, it might be something to do with the uh, masks, uh, the DDS masks or the uh, mesh, I'm not quite sure, but the next version, apparently that will be fixed. But it's not a deal breaker. It's not, you know you don't notice it all the time unless you're looking. There's a couple of a bit further up there. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. I hope you find it interesting and that you'll give it a go. It's all free, and um, I'll put the descriptions below. Uh, the links in the description below. Uh, you have a good day, and we'll see you soon. Cheerio.